fish. Fish. What's to say fish? No. Do you want some fish? No. Some trout fish? No. But you love trout fish. Trout fish. It's very yummy. You like it. Girlfriend's gotta do her hair. Mommy. Hmm? Flower. Give it to Hossi. You gave it to Hossi, Mommy. Oh, baby. Ah, ah. No, Nala, don't throw baby on Hossi. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I take you into my very personal, very vulnerable space. I am taking you through the season that I'm going through, through this time of the unknown, through my sometimes darkness, and through my pain. Today, I just want to reminisce about my baby's lives about how dear they were to me, how precious, how beautiful. What an honor to be called their mom. I am realizing as I go through this process of grieving for my babies, that grace and grief can coexist. What is grace? Grace is undeserved favor. We know that we have been saved by grace through faith, that it's not by works, but it is by his grace that we have been saved. Grace equips us to endure difficult situations. Grace comes into play because Jesus never promised us a life without pain and suffering, but he did promise us that he will always be there through it with us. So, um... I'm not supposed to cry. Ah, oh, except tears of joy. Um, today's the 26th. It's the twins birthday, 26 January, 2024. You guys would have been three today. So I'm gonna go on a walk. I just did school run in the morning and um, I don't know what I've been doing afterwards. A whole lot of things in the house, but I remembered that one of the promises I'd made to myself after having the twins was like, I'm gonna lose weight, I'm gonna eat right, I'm gonna be healthy, I'm gonna exercise, and I'm gonna be a fit mom ready to run after the twins and you know I'm gonna be running after infants I and mean, then toddlers and preschoolers and primary schoolers and eventually teenagers so in honor of you my babies mommy's going for a walk on your birthday and mommy's gonna eat right and be healthy and lose weight and be fit for Tori and Tim and for all the assignments that God has for her. So thank you for being my inspiration. And I grow up, I want to be like you guys. Ah, happy birthday, happy heavenly birthday, twinsies. Mommy loves you. <laughs> Trying to find a camera stand in the streets. I'm sitting somewhere in Park Lane on the road. Maybe I should start coming here just to have me time sometimes. Just gather my thoughts. <laughs> anyway, um, As I was walking, I was reminded that as a worshipper, you know, as a musician, as a worshipper, um, 
I, I love a lot of songs that talk about, you know, Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul. I, I, I love surrender. <laughs> well, I love to profess it to the Lord. I don't know about the process of surrender. It's not nice. But I was thinking that many a times when I sing songs that say, Lord, I give you all of me. Um, most of the time I'm so focused on my my strength Lord I give you my verb my tenacity my passion my time you know I, I'll be thinking about all of me in that context and um, I've learned or I'm learning you know in this dark season in this season of the unknown that that statement is not only talking about the good, you know, that God actually wants us to give him even our broken parts, broken parts of us. Um, the hurt parts, the disappointed parts, the, the questions parts. to give him all of me even the broken me the grieving me you know because when you begin to give him the broken parts of you he makes something beautiful out of it yesterday as I was driving back from a school meeting in the car I was crying and talking to God and screaming and one of the things that I said which began to bubble up is Lord make something beautiful out of me make something beautiful out of me and I still echo the same sentiments even today twinsies on your birthday may God make something beautiful out of my story out of me losing you out of me surrender you back to daddy god um, may god use the story to touch many lives heal many lives give many lives hope and faith that god is enough um, that he's enough even if some of the most important things or the most important people that are no longer part of your life. Some of you, you've lost your mom, your dad, a sibling, a grandparent, a colleague, a friend. And I know I've asked myself this question to say, who's going to fill that void of having, of being a mom of four? and having little people around me and one thing that he constantly reminds me and which i think he wants me to learn because again as a worshiper i've said this out loud to say you're enough for me you're all i want and you're all i need and truth be told when we go through such times and through such seasons this is when it's really tested whether god is enough for you Grief is an ever-present reality in this fallen world, but grace acts as a shield, a comfort, and strength during tough times. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. In the Amplified Version, it says, But he said to me, My grace, my favor and loving kindness and mercy is enough for you, sufficient against any danger and enables you to bear the trouble manfully for my strength and power are made perfect fulfilled and completed and show themselves most effective in your weakness therefore i will all the more gladly glory in my weakness and infirmities that the strength and the power of christ the messiah may rest Yes, that it may pitch a tent over 
and dwell upon me. Grace does not allow us to give into the power of our feelings. Yes, our feelings are valid. They do come from God after all. But he is also a high priest that understands our feelings, that understands our questions. So a quick story about this place behind me. Um, just in September, I think, a couple of months, a couple of weeks before the twins passed, I went to Lesotho to work on a project back home. And um, I remember my thousand was around at my house. Love you, Matao. And she had taken Tori and Tim to school because I had planned to leave earlier, but then I delayed a bit. So the twins were crying for me, mommy, don't go. And so I drove here next to Academy of Toddlers to ride with them so that we can meet with my thousand when she's coming back and she'll then take them back. And I remember being so emotional and feeling like I don't even know how working moms do it where they're able to leave their kids and travel and go on trips for a long time. And I remember being so emotional. I actually have a video of it. <sighs> oh, okay. I now understand what working moms go through. Whew. Tis well. But yeah, I just wanted to say shout out to all the working moms that have to leave their babies. Long story short, every time I dra drive from town past Academy of Toddlers, sometimes I can't even tend to look on this side because I get so emotional. So today I wanted to come here and say this place has no power over me. Fear has no power over me. Um, I can conquer it. I can allow myself to be in the moment and feel and experience the pain and know that I can be able to move on, that I will be able to drive past this place and no longer identify this place as the last place where I cried over the twins before I traveled while they were still alive. So to conquer more fears and confront more anxieties and the just shall live by faith and it is by faith that we overcome so yeah just thought when i was walking past i was like i remember this place oh thank you jesus understands every feeling that comes with grief grace allows us to feel every emotion and not forget god's love his intentionality faithfulness, and even purpose for our lives. Grace enables us to trust God and his process. Today, I just want to focus on grace. I want to focus on the memories, even as I celebrate their third birthday, gratitude, sanity, and even a willingness to live. Lord, thank you that I have not lost my mind. I thank you that grace will not allow me to lose my mind over this hurt. Thank you that I'm realizing the honor of being their mom, the honor of them being part of our family. I focus on grace, grace to know that I have experienced such a love so rare that it's worth grieving for and actually worth celebrating a birthday. Happy birthday, twinsies, mommy and daddy, Tori and Timmy and Dumo all your uncles and aunties and cousins and brothers and sisters all over the world love you dearly. We miss you so much, but we are not void of this promise that one day we will see you. One day it will be a big, happy reunion in heaven and the peace of God and the glory of God and the joy of the Lord will be made manifest. Why? God, you guys, I knew you were too quiet. Hosi, Nala, what do you guys have to say for yourselves? Do more. Mm -mm. I'm the 
this is not the day.